Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Hope you're all doing okay in quarantine. Today we're going to be starting off a new mini-series of the process of me creating or designing a new Lego gun. So you could do this with your own gun if you want. And today's episode is going to be on the mechanism. Yeah, let's just hop straight into the video. So guys, the first part of making a mechanism, or the way I do it, is I think of what do I want the mechanism to do. So... I've done semi-automatic in the past, I've done single shot, it's just that I wanted to do full auto, but I also wanted it to do blowback, so where it has an actual moving piece. So, basically what I do is I search up online and I found this brilliant video by Kevin108, so he's obviously massive in the Lego gun space. But yeah, he did this one on a full auto blowback pistol, and he did a really good tutorial on that, so I followed it. Remade the gun in Lego, so this is the process I sort of go about so I can understand how the mechanism works, improve it or change it to meet my needs. Of course, all credit goes to Kevin108 for this gun you see right now, at least in the mechanism. So now I'll show you the mechanism. So here's the gun, now we're going to open it up to get to the mechanism. This is one side of the shell, so we're going to put that to one side. And here we have the mechanism. So this is going to be a really quick explanation of how the mechanism works. It, it might not make sense, my explanation skills are the best, but I'll try and explain how it works. So basically, this cog here, you load a rubber band, and this will sit at the end of the barrel here. So this is resting like that, connected to the cog. Now the cog is then being forced by a rubber band to turn clockwise. Uh, making this little cog attached to these two black pieces go anti-clockwise. Now this grey piece here will not allow this piece to move here, therefore not allowing the band to be moved. So when you prime the gun using the slider, so forwards and back, once it goes forwards and back, this actually pushes this piece here backwards, allowing this to spin therefore allowing the rubber band to be moved from this cog moving clockwise onto this black piece here. Now this, now with the rubber band going from here to here, is going to push the slider forwards. But the slider, you might not be able to see, is being stopped from moving the entire way by the trigger. So now once you pull down the trigger, it allows the slider to go all the way and then fire the band. Then the rubber bands on the side of the slider pull it back pushing this back and then allowing this to spin again and it'll be move another one onto here and then you can pull the trigger or not. So that was a super quick explanation of the gun. Now we're going to move over to a quick firing test to see how the gun currently performs in its current state. So guys, now we're going to try and load five rounds into this thing and fire it off. So as you can see there, the gun broke off, the cog went straight off, so um, the obvious flaw there is the gun is not structurally stable enough or strong enough to even hold four rubber bands. So now we're going to take it back to the desk, repair it and make some modifications and then we'll test it again. So yeah, let's go back to the desk. So now we're going to repair the gun. So now that the gun is repaired, we need to make some modifications. So we need to strengthen the build, mainly at these points here, so the bottom bit and up here by the cog. So I pre-made a few bits I thought could help. So we're going to add these two Technic pieces to the top, which on their own will not do much. But in conjunction with these Technic pieces, we'll definitely be able to hold it together. These are really good for just holding things together. They're really strong. The only thing I'd say is um, don't take notice that they're too too high on here. This is just to work out if the weapon will work with it. Um, obviously, we can make it look clean in the design phase. 
So we've done the cog now, now we need to do some bits down here. So there's not really much we can do without using more of these pieces and I want to keep this sliding piece just open so you can see it all. So I'm just going to put some tile bits down here which will help out a bit. It, it won't be the strongest but it will help out and we're looking for all the help we can get. Bam, so now those are done. One more change is, um, as you can see, the slider here has all of the rubber bands pulling it back on one side. Uh, there's none on the other side, so we're going to even that out. It's always good to have things even on both sides, otherwise it can present flaws. It seemed to, on this video, work fine, but we want to get it running as smooth as possible, so we're going to put another band on here. Now we might have to work out how many bands we need on here to get to slide back the best. Anyway, now we've done the modifications, we can take it back to the range and see if the modifications have worked. So guys, now we're going to try the modified version. So we're going to load it up. So there we are guys, the gun is fully loaded without it breaking this time. So now we're going to try and fire the gun. So basically what we're going to do is cock the weapon. So pull it forwards and backwards there. Now one round, I'm just going to call this chambered. And let's see if it'll fire. So we've run into an immediate problem. It's fired one round, but as you can see the slider's not managed to come all the way back. So this means we need more power of the rubber bands. So I took off the rubber band on this side for a test, but now I'm gonna add it back on and see if it will work. So now I've got one rubber band on either side for the slider, uh, so, and we've got five rubber bands loaded again, so we're gonna try this again. One chambered, and let's go. So now I'm coming to another problem, I'm holding down the trigger, and it's not firing. Now this means that having two rubber bands is too powerful for the single rubber band on the top to be able to push the slider forwards. These are holding it back too much. So now we're in a dilemma. Basically, if we take off one of these rubber bands, then it's not powerful to bring the slider back. And if we put two on, then it's no longer powerful enough for one rubber band to slide all the way forwards. So just to show you how it works normally, we're going to slide it forwards to manually shoot the gun. So slide it forwards, it's going to fire. And then a cock all the way back. And then it's going to get another one. And then the last three shots will work. We're in our dilemma now of how to fix this. One way we can fix this is by lengthening the barrel. So make the single rubber bands more powerful. And the other way is to try a different method of these rubber bands. Pulling it back to make them slightly weaker and fine tune it. Either way, we're going to head back to the desk and make the needed changes. So guys, now we're back at the desk. The first thing I want to try out is moving these pins back to on either side. Therefore meaning that less force will come from these rubber bands. Then seeing if that works. And then I can incrementally increase the length of the barrel until I can get it to work reliably. So yeah, let's get into that. Okay, so now we have made the changes and we're going to test this again. I'm not going to bore you with all the testing. I'm going to go test it, do that. And then if that still doesn't work, I'll just show a time lapse of me building out the barrel. I don't want to bore you with this process. It takes a very long time. So yeah, let's get straight into it.
So guys, I've now finished all of the modifications on the gun. So here is the gun. So as you can see, a much longer barrel. So this means that the rubber bands carry more energy onto the bolt, pushing it all the way forwards. So as you can see, this is bending a bit. In the final design, I will not do this because it will be a much more tough design. That's also the reason I've only loaded five rubber bands into it for now. It should be able to do a lot more than that. But for now, I'm going to leave this weaker as I've run out of parts. But in the actual thing, once I've ordered some more parts, it will be a lot stronger, meaning there can be more rubber bands and it won't be bending or flexing. It has these two blue pins here to keep the rubber bands on the outside so they don't exactly touch the bolt. This was making the bolt harder to come back as well. Uh, we've kept with two rubber bands, one on either side to make it even. Other than that, the design's all the same. So now we'll get to shooting it. So as you can see there, super fast fire rate and it works reliably. It works really well. And yeah, I think that'll be it for this video. Thank you guys all for watching. Suggest to me what gun I should put this mechanism in for the next episode. In the next episode, we'll be going over designing whichever gun I want to put the mechanism in. And all of the design changes that may have to come afterwards. So yeah guys, thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!